We would like to welcome the president of the Office of Administrative Tax Appeals and the Tax Commission, uh, Glenn Newman. The Office of Administrative Tax Appeals consists of two divisions, the Tax Commission and the Tax Appeals Tribunal. The Tax Commission is responsible for conducting hearings on appeals of real property tax assessments determined and released by the Department of Finance each year. The Tax Appeals Tribunal conducts hearings to resolve disputes between taxpayers and the Department of Finance regarding taxes other than the New York City real property tax, including business income and excise taxes. The fiscal 2016 preliminary budget for the Office of Administrative Tax Appeals totals $4.5 million, including $4.2 million in personal services funded to support 41 full-time positions. Today we would like to examine the Office's budgetary needs and discuss ways we can improve or enhance your operations. Uh, as is our practice, I'd like to uh, ask you to uh, affirm, to tell the truth before this committee, and to respond honestly to council member questions. I will. Uh, thank you very much. And I'd uh, like to uh, recognize that we've been joined by Council Member Levine, and you may now proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the Office of Administrative Tax Appeals was established by Local Law 57 uh, of the year 2007, and it brought together the city's two agencies that hear tax appeals, the Tax Appeals Tribunal and the Tax Commission. The Tax Appeals Tribunal is an independent forum to hear appeals of finance department determinations relating to the city's non-property taxes, the general corporation tax, bank tax, unincorporated business tax, commercial rent tax, real property transfer tax, and others. <clears throat> the tribunal consists of two divisions, an appeals division and an administrative law judge division. The appeals division consists of three commissioners appointed by the mayor to hear appeals from the administrative law judge or ALJ division where the trials of the tax matters take place. I am the president of the Tax Appeals Tribunal. Uh, two colleagues on that tribunal are Robert Firestone and Ellen Hoffman. After determination by one of the three administrative law judges, either the taxpayer or the Department of Finance, represented by the Corporation Council, may appeal to the commissioners of the, at the Appeals Division. Only the taxpayer may appeal a commissioner's, decision, commissioner's decisions, and that appeal goes directly to the appellate division of the New York State Supreme Court for review. These cases can involve many substantive and procedural issues, foolish, <laughs> such as what income is taxable, what deductions are proper, and the apportionment of income to the city. There are about 70 cases pending, and the cases can proceed for months or years as hearings and briefing of complicated issues are presented. The Tax Commission is the city's independent forum for administrative review of property tax assessments. Pursuant to New York City Charter and Administrative Code, the Tax Commission's mission is to ensure determinations of real property tax assessment protests are fair and efficient in order to provide an effective administrative review of property tax assessments within the city of New York. Annual assessments are the basis for the real property tax levy, the city's largest source of revenue. An assessment encompasses a tax lot's tax class, market value, and eligibility for full or partial exemption. The amount of a tax lot assessment or its assessed value for tax lots where the assessment increases are not limited by law is based upon the property's market value to which the assessment ratio for the tax class is applied. The tax imposed on a tax lot for a fiscal year is the product of its taxable assessed value the overall tax rate applicable to its designated tax class as adopted by the City Council. Each January, the Department of Finance, a sister agency, publishes tentative assessments for the more than one million tax lots in the City of New York. The Finance Department sends a notice of value to the owner or designee of each tax lot in connection with the property taxes to be levied, levied for the next fiscal year that starts July 1. In addition, finance publishes assessment ratios for the four property tax classes and the guidelines they use to value properties. Each year, the Department of Finance calculates individual assessments and the assessment ratio for each of the four tax classes, considering the fluctuations in the real estate market, physical alterations, and or changes in the tax status issuing a final assessment role on May 25th. State and local laws provide the right and means for taxpayers to obtain administrative review of the individual real property tax assessments. Tax rates are not subject to property-specific challenge. <clears throat> the claims in an application for correction that the Tax Commission may review are misclassification, that is the property is assessed in the wrong tax class for its type and use under the four-class system, 
excessiveness, principally that the property fails to receive all or a portion of a partial exemption, inequality, that is the property's assessed value is set at a higher proportion of market value than applied to other similar properties in the same tax class, and for unlawfulness, which is principally that the property fails to receive a complete tax exemption. Uh, the accepted methodologies for valuing real estate use sales of comparable properties, income generated by the property, or the cost of reproducing the structure. Disputes over individual assessments are an inevitable feature of an ad valorem property tax. The Tax Commission is an accessible forum that expeditiously resolves assessment disputes, orders rem remedial action where appropriate in accordance with the applicable law and, and appraisal concepts. The existence, mission, and authority of the Tax Commission uh, an administrative agency of the City of New York are required pursuant to the New York State Real Property Tax Law and the New York City Charter and Administrative Code. I do always like to point out that the Tax Commission has been in existence since 1857. I'm not quite that old, but uh, we have a long history at the Tax Commission. The fair and effective operation of the Tax Commission in, its dis in dis discharging its functions is an integral part of a tax administration in the City of New York. Fair and efficient review process is essential for reducing costly litigation of assessment disputes. Appropriate action by the Tax Commission brings closure to many claims that might be further contested uh, in courts, costing additional time and resources for both taxpayers and the City. Moreover, taxpayers may be inclined to moderate their demands when with the genuine prospect of timely relief from the Tax Commission in lieu of overpaying for taxes for a number of years while pursuing relief in court under an Article 7 proceeding that is defended by the Law Department uh, and any settlements are subject to the approval of the controller or expensive risk-laden trials and related proceedings in court. Another feature of the Tax Commission's operation is the long-standing practice of employing a standard acceptance agreement which requires the discontinuance of all pending judicial proceedings with respect to prior years when accepting an offer of reduction by the Tax Commission. This benefits the City by eliminating thousands of pending Article 7 proceedings. In sum, though a small agency in the context of staffing and expense budget allocations, the Tax Commission is an integral component of the New York City tax administration system. Pursuant to the Charter, the Tax Commission proper consists of a President, that's me, and six Commissioners appointed by the Mayor with advice and consent of the Council to staggered six-year terms. The President, as head of the agency, serves full-time, while the six Commissioners serve part-time. Each member of the Commission must have at least three years of ex business experience in real estate or real estate law, and additionally, the Commission must include at least one resident of each borough. The Tax Commission strives to meet a challenge to provide fair and efficient hearings on protests of property tax assessments and maintain the essential features of the agency's operations. Um, we have statistics. I have a few extra copies of our annual report for 2014 that's posted on our website. Uh, in the 2014-15 tax year, the sixth full year of the integration of the Tax Commission and the Tax Appeals Tribunal, we had a staff of 37 full-time employees plus three part-time commissioners and an operating budget of 4.3, almost 4.4 million. The Tax Commission's core function, ruling on annual applications for correction of assessment, is a great responsibility. Application forms along with associated instructions and information summaries, informational summaries issued by the Tax Commission for use in administering the formal administrative re review process are revised annually. The number and variety of applications filed each year require a multitude of functions to be performed. These include outreach to the public, information sessions on the application process, intake and stratification and sorting of forms and documents, creating and maintaining case files, records, calendaring, allocating internal assignments, scheduling, preparing for and conducting the hearings, perform, performing legal appraisal and factual research and analysis, rendering determinations, generating and mailing disposition notices, processing remedial relief and communications with the Department of Finance and the Law Department. We also do auditing and compiling and analyzing our performance statistics. Uh, we do computer programming and handle customer inquiries and re requests under the Freedom of Information Law. The Tax Commission staff, together with finance, held outreach sessions in every borough. Morning in 2014 and 15, we held morning and evening sessions so that hundreds of property owners were able to get information on their property tax assessments and help in filing protests. We did outreach through the City Council uh, 
to maximize the uh, impact of these and had about 600 and some odd people, I have exact numbers here, uh, coming to those sessions. As in previous years, the Department of Finance sent renewal of property tax exemptions to not-for-profit organizations requiring them to provide updated information to establish their exemption from property tax. This resulted in 194 applications protesting the denial or reduction of their exemptions as compared to 184 in the prior year. These matters require additional outreach to those claiming exemption. There are in-person hearings and extensive documentation of the exempt status of the organization and the use of the premises. Many of these organizations do not have professional staff, and so the Tax Commission spends a considerable amount of time explaining the requirements for exemption and how to present the facts needed to prove their claim. In 2014, the, taxpayer, uh, the Tax Commission received 52,221 applications, covering 193,305 separately assessed tax lots. The aggregate value of those applications is $177.6 billion in assessed value. It's about 70% of the assessment roll. The Tax Commission conducted 24,254 substantive hearings in 2014. And in exercising it, our two-year jurisdiction, we took remedial action that in the aggregate granted $5.85 billion in assessment reductions, yielding approximately $521 million in tax relief to aggrieved taxpayers. In conjunction with its disposition of applications in 2014, the Tax Commission brought to closure 16,495 pending judicial review proceedings um, where they claimed errors totaling about $60 billion. Uh, I'll be glad to answer your questions, if you have any. Thank you uh, very much. In your uh, testimony, you indicated that there are, uh, well, well, first, thank you for all the great work you do. You are uh, with, with the um, with the few employees that you have, the 37 full-time employees, you are certainly able to handle uh, cases in the thousands. So. Uh, thank you for that. Um, in, in the testimony, you indicated that we had uh, three part-time commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, and y earlier you mentioned that there's uh, a president followed by six commissioners. Right. That's the authorization. So the, the charter says six commissioners. We have three that yeah, positions. you are, are one of the commissioners. Uh, that would make four. I'm the full-time. Three of the part-time commissioner positions are filled. There mm -hmm. are three that are vacant. And how long have they been vacant? Um, in 2013, the Staten Island representative resigned, and I think in 2012 was the last time we had a Bronx representative. So 2013 was Bronx? Well, and Staten Island resigned in 2013, and the, and the Bronx, I think, has been vacant since 2012. And what about the last one? Uh, that's, a, that's an at-large. That, uh, that person also resigned in 2013. Okay, so uh, they, they ostensibly uh, resigned for the new administration to fill their space. They resigned for any number of reasons, including the fact. Yeah. 20, 20, left it. Uh, apparently, two people left at the very beginning of 2014, whether it was December 31st of 2013 or the very beginning of 2014. We can check that. Um, the salary for these part-time positions is $25,600 a year, so nobody's getting rich in this position. Uh, we do require the equivalent of 100 days of work for that $25,000, and frequently it turns into more than the 100 days uh, as the cases uh, are submitted and the hearings held and determinations are made. So it's, it's difficult to recruit people who have the expertise in real estate and real estate tax who are willing to take a relatively minimal compensation um, to do a real job. And who is responsible for filling these vacancies? Well, these positions are nominated uh, by the mayor and approved by the city council. I have been in touch with the mayor's appointments people, and they're sending over some resumes of potential candidates that we will explain what the job is, talk to them, and make recommendations to the appointments committee. Uh, have, has this been advertised? Are they doing yes, anything? Yes, they've for done outreach. They have, um, uh, I know we have posted these positions in various publications and made people aware 
uh, in the real estate industry, the accounting industry, the law industry. So, so these have been publicly posted? Yes, they are noted and available. Thank you for being an agency that publicly posts its job <laughs> openings. Uh, I appreciate that in a way you would not never believe. Um, with regard to the, uh, the property tax assessment uh, uh, morning and evening sessions? Yes. Uh, I, I, I would love to, how many districts were you able to reach out we, to? We covered um, every borough, okay. two sessions. We did a couple of um, other sessions f uh, at the request of, um, one was uh, out in Howard Beach at the request of Councilman Ulrich. Um, we reached out to the Finance Committee asking if the Finance Committee wanted to arrange last year we held a, a, a meeting for the staff at the City Council mm -hmm. um, so that the council members would have a resource within their office to possibly help people answer simple questions or direct them to the Tax Commission for their more detailed questions. Uh, I, I would love to work with you to host another one of those sessions so that we can provide better constituent service to our 8.4 million New Yorkers and uh, to make sure that we are working to bring this around as an annual program. And is this focused on mainly single family homeowners, commercial properties, co-op, condos? We answer questions for everybody and, and, and Lord knows there are many questions that are asked. Most of these sessions though are attended by single family homeowners and those who are um, small uh, commercial properties and some small rental buildings. Um, the larger properties, about 90, well, 98% of the properties in class two, three, and four, uh, residential apartment buildings, co-ops and condos, utility properties and commercial properties are represented by professionals. Um, so the larger properties have their own private, their professionals that they retain to handle these things. It's the small property owners and class one property owners that need a little bit of uh, assistance and guidance. I want to thank you for your 2014 uh, report. In that you mentioned 52,221 applications covering 193,305 separately assessed tax locks and capping 177.6 billion. Um, I guess one question is uh, why these, this information is not included in the uh, mayor's preliminary management report and uh, are it, you're actually one of my only agencies that does not have a section in the mayor's management report. Um, I, would you be, uh, have you had discussions with the mayor's office of operations to be added to the mayor's management report? Do you think it would be a good idea and would you be, willing to provide some performance metrics on how we can evaluate how you're doing. Compound question, uh, yes, uh, no, and we can talk about it. Uh, the, uh, we have had discussions with the mayor's management report. There were years, um, I've been doing this for 12 years now, so I think we were dropped from the mayor's management report in 2003 or 2004 maybe even slightly earlier, in part because the way the tax commission works which is where the volume of cases are, isn't, it's not appropriate for quarterly or semi-annual reporting. Um, at this point, for example, if we add the first quarter uh, for the tax commission, um, we would have the applications in but no results, no determinations. We're a very, uh, we're a cyclical and calendar-driven process with that starting in January when the notices go out, when we do our outreach and our accepting applications and helping people with the, those applications, and then we start the hearings in the beginning of April, and we start making determinations, and those go throughout the year. So it is, we do reply, have the annual report. It gets published every March 1st. It's posted, uh, and those, that gives a comprehensive view of what we've done. I'm not sure that we can, uh, other than reporting on the gross number of applications, there isn't that much that we can do on a quarterly or semi-annual basis. Would you be willing to provide performance indicators, uh, such as, a, a, and targets and goals? So uh, generally, as, as I've run my companies, I've always said, okay, um, this is where we're at, this is where we'd like to get, this is what we're gonna get for our dollars, and by investing these dollars, we can get a better return on investment. So it's it just, it's hard to operate without any targets or goals. 
Right, well, our targeting goals are to, do, to fairly and equitably determine every application every year. Um, one of the concerns I had was, in and, and discussing this, and I'll, I'll quote myself, because who better to quote? Um, I spoke to the mayor's management people and I said, if you can come up with an indicator or a metric for fairness, I'd love to see it, and I'd love to have it. And there, they made the same point that you just made. Well, what about the time it takes to make a determination or, uh, or some other measure? And my response to that was, if we evaluate hearing officers on the time it takes them to decide a case, they will decide the cases very quickly, which could mean not giving people additional time to submit additional documents, not asking questions that would probe whether somebody actually has a legitimate case for a reduction, because they'd be more interested in disposing of the case than getting the right answer. So to me, timing is important, and we finish every hearing other than certain of the exemption cases uh, that take a little more time, a little more energy, and uh, have more legal issues. Every one of the valuation applications is determined by the end of the year. So I would rather do that and get the determinations correct and fair than have somebody say, somebody's watching me and saying I should take 30 days or 40 days to make a determination, but if I give the person an extra two weeks to submit information, I won't make that deadline. So my feeling is that fairness is more important than does the, uh, the time. Does the tribunal have an annual report? Uh, yes, we, have, we are a little bit backlogged on the tribunal annual report. We can get you statistics for that. They haven't posted the annual report. They handle about 60 or 70 cases a year. They're much more involved. We are also under time constraints by the charter to make those decisions within six months. Um, so we, will, uh, we can get you that information. So along the lines of trying to come up with some type of targeting and metric, so you received 52,221 applications. Uh, according to your testimony in your annual report, you conducted 24,254 substantive hearings. I, what happened to the rest? Uh, that's, that's a very good question. There are roughly 10,000 applications. Actually, it's in our annual report. We have a chart that tells you which properties were ineligible for, an app, for uh, a review. It runs about 10,000 a year, year in, year out. Those are uh, applications which are either filed late, there are a few of those, um, where there's no income and expense statement attached. You see, the tax commission, the law requires you to file a tax commission application to preserve your right to file an Article 7 in court. So there are thousands of applications that are just placeholders. They're not interested in substantive review at the Tax Commission. They want to either preserve their right to go to court later on or litigate in court. So we had roughly 8,000, between 8 and 10,000, I actually get the numbers right in our annual report, 7,368 properties that were not eligible for review because there was uh, either a defect in the application or they didn't give us an income and expense statement and another, um, we, we get passes um, where a representative will come in and say, I filed an application, but I'm really not interested in a substantive hearing, and they pass and wait till next year. Uh, isn't the purpose of this to, so, so the, the judicial system is, is large, cumbersome, and expensive, and as far as it seems, that you, your, your commission is much less expensive and better bang for the buck. Um, why, why are we allowing, uh, so many thousands and thousands of cases to be rubber, uh, essentially rubber stamped through. Um, sh shouldn't the courts, the law department, which is coming up after you, be saying, listen, they, they did not fully adjudicate at the lower level, and therefore, because the, of that the, defect, this case must be dismissed and, and force it to be resolved with you? Well, which would that, be cheaper than that, in the fact, is the way the tax appeals tribunal works. You have to exhaust your administrative remedies, make yeah. your pitch, present your evidence, and then go to court after that, and it's a different level of review. The way the tax commission works under state law, uh, if somebody files an application, even if they don't give an income and expense statement, they are allowed to file in court. Uh, we've had discussions with the Office of Court Administration together with the law department uh, about these cases, and the judge, the administrative judge, asked the same question. Why are there thousands and thousands of cases pending that don't seem to move? And one of the representatives uh, of the practitioner's side said, well, if somebody challenges the assessment ratio, 
and proves that the assessment ratio shouldn't be 45% of value for class two and four, but should be some other number, then all of these cases become good cases with refunds owed. Uh, to which I responded, it's been 35 years that we've been working under this current law that sets assessment ratios. Nobody's ever challenged them, so. If you, if you would be willing to provide a, a, a legislative language either for the city charter or, or, or administrative code or the state law, uh, we'd be interested in, in seeing what would be necessary to change so that uh, people aren't filing claims as placeholders and to preserve their cases but are actually adjudicating their cases with you. I'd like to turn it over to Councilmember Levine for some brief questions so that we can go on to our 12-15 uh, hearing with oath. Thank you, Chair Kalos. Uh, thank you, sir, for testifying today. Uh, you mentioned that most small property owners, single family homeowners, do not have professional representation. So uh, I don't know if you would call that per se representation. Yeah. Well, we were told at one point to call them self represented litigants. Pro se is easier, fewer letters. Understood. How much of a challenge is that? This seems very technical. I could imagine that would put the property taxpayer at a great disadvantage. Um, we, that's why we do these outreach sessions. And when we do our hearings for the uh, pro se's, um, we send our hearing officers out to the borough offices. We have uh, uh, the, some space in each one of the finance business centers where we can hold the hearings. We spend about a half an hour for, with each one explaining what it is, how their assessment was arrived at, what it is they need to, to um, show. We also have extensive instructions for a class one property owner. Uh, we advise them to go, because those properties are valued on comparable sales, we give them the link and the uh, ability to look at every sale of every property. Well, we do. Finance keeps track of every sale of every property in the city of New York for the last two years. So that is the database that people can go to and look and say, well, you know, the house next to mine sold for this amount and finance thinks the value is some other amount and they can give that proof. It is a challenge though because the real property tax system is complicated. Uh, and when I tell people to look at their assessed value, divide by 6% for class one property owner, divide by 6% and that's the effective market value, they look at me and say, how do you divide by a percentage? I wonder whether there are cases in which the property owner didn't win or didn't get as much back because they lacked a professional advocate? That's a tough one. On the other hand, there are cases where property, property owners do win and they end up paying their representatives <laughs> a significant portion of the refund. So we do have a balance there. We try to explain to people how, what they have to do to make their case. That's part of our responsibility. The, um, uh, we, I worked on the uh, ethics provisions for administrative law judges that we also use um, and we take guidance from that at the Tax Commission which is let the pro se person know what they what the issue is explain how they can make their case and let them come back with the facts of the um, income and expense statement that is needed to make that case and we do go through that yeah, the, the City Council and the mayor as well have been looking at other legal arenas housing court, family court, immigration court, and working to get um, city-funded representation for um, low-income tenants or other people subject to rulings. I wonder whether we need to look at this arena and consider such a program. The whole tax field, business tax as well as property tax, there are a lot of small property owners, small business owners who can't afford, I used to say, well, when I was in private practice, my billing rate was $500 an hour. So I made a comment to one of somebody in the tax practice that not many people can afford a $500 an hour lawyer. And he said, you've been gone for a dozen years. It's a lot more than that now. And I think that's a problem. Which, which raises my next question about the role of commissioners. I would imagine if they're taking a job at such a low salary, comparable to what they would earn in the private sector, that does it enhance their practice? They do it for a couple of years? I hope not. I hope it does not enhance their practice. Anybody who's taking this job in order to make a name for themselves or to get real estate clients, we have a problem with. Most of the people that we have do, hearing these cases that are in the part-time position are retired from city government. 
I've got somebody who was uh, formerly a counsel at the Department of Finance, Susan Grossman is one of our part-time commissioners. I've got three other part-time people, one of whom was the director of our appraisal and hearing group, one of them was a law department attorney in the certiorari division, the other was a finance department attorney uh, um, who dealt with property tax matters both in the policy and the legal affairs offices. Um, that is the way we've been finding people, is to say it's not their sole source of income. They're either getting a pension or, or they have um, uh, other business uh, operations on the side to supplement their income. But does, are there prohibitions against how quickly you can leave your service as a commissioner? And appear, and we are subject to Charter 60, uh, Section 68. You can't appear before the tax commission for one year after. One year. That's, that's right. the rule. And okay. most of these people, I say, are, are retired. They're not looking to expand the private practice. Got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank uh, hold on. Uh, so uh, my, uh, my, my, the, my, the, the unit head from the finance division just informed me that the uh, last time that there was a report from the, uh, from the tribunal was 2008. So if, if we could please get a report uh, going for 2014 at least, and then work on getting the old information. And again, by including something like that in the PMMR, at least some of the big ballpark numbers that you do include in your reports, that would be incredibly helpful. Right, the tribunal, though, you know, is a much smaller operation, about 70 cases pending. Yes, it's just, right. I, we're should responsible for oversight. I take it seriously, that's why you're here now and mm -hmm. why we appreciate having you here. Um, and uh, just okay. thank you for all of the uh, great work uh, that you do, and uh, the only thing is I, I thank you for having a body that functions much better than our own. Um, I, I wish that my colleagues and others did not go into lobbying or something else as soon as they were done, and uh, to the extent we can fix that, that would be amazing. Thank, thank you, you very much.